Hey everybody, it's Michaela from Ascend Smarter Intervention, where we make research-based literacy intervention easy and accessible. Today, I'm jumping in here to answer a question that we get every single day, and that is how we teach writing explicitly in our structured literacy intervention sessions. So let's jump in. In order to understand how we include literacy instruction, first, we need to address the five core components of literacy. And notice here that I say of literacy and not of reading, because we know that reading and writing are reciprocal processes. So yes, in our instruction, we're always hitting on phonological awareness, phonics, vocab, fluency, and comprehension as they relate to reading, but we're also going through each of these areas explicitly through a writing lens. Let me show you what I mean. When we talk about phonological awareness from a writing lens, we are addressing things like segmenting as well as sound isolation and auditory discrimination. So for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to use the CK phonogram as an example, because a lot of times when we are working with students, we'll have a phonogram or a target skill, and we're hitting on all of these different core components of literacy as they relate to reading and writing with that key phonogram in mind. So for a CK based lesson, we might use the sentence segmenting prompt and ask them, how many words do you hear in this sentence? The truck got stuck in the mud and they need to identify how many words were in that sentence. Number two, auditory discrimination are the words mock and knock the same or different. For sound isolation, we'll ask something like, what is the first sound you hear in the word struck? How many syllables do you hear in the word brick? and tap out the sounds or tell me the sounds you hear in the word flock. So students are going through these activities and it's helping to prime their brain for sentence, uh, sentence writing with the sentence segmenting, for spelling with the different auditory discrimination, being able to hear the sounds, isolate the sounds, as well as segment those sounds so that they're getting ready for spelling that we'll get to in a second. For phonics, what we're doing here is combining or building a connection between orthography and phonology. So when we think of orthography, we're thinking about the visual component to our language. So can a student take a symbol and recognize it as what we call a letter? So if they were to see this symbol here that looks like a curved line with a dot above it, can they identify that as a J? Phonology is being able to recognize sound. So what we're doing with phonics is connecting those two. In reading or in the reading part of our lesson, this is going to look like a sound drill where, we'll where we will show students a letter and they need to produce the sound. So if we show them a card with the letter S on it, they should say S. For writing, it's exactly the opposite. Again, they're reciprocal processes. So instead of showing them a letter, we are asking them to identify what letter makes a certain sound. So this might look like what letter says J and they'll find a J. Maybe if they've learned at this point that G can also say J and DGE can say J, they can find those as well. Typically we're only asking them to identify words or identify sounds that they've been explicitly taught. So we could ask that, we could ask what says S and they're looking for S, what says CH, they're looking for CH. In our CK lesson, we will also make sure to ask what says that new pattern auditory drill, and they should be able to identify C, K, and C, K at this point. Then we're going to combine their phonological awareness skills with these phonic skills for spelling. So if we give them five spelling words, maybe we're giving them crack, slack, rock, kick, and trick. They need to know how many syllables do I hear in these words? How many sounds do I hear in these words? So for rock, I hear er, ah, k. What says er, what says ah, and what says k. They're tying all of that knowledge together for spelling. Then we'll move on from spelling into vocabulary, where you can absolutely use the spelling words and the list you just gave them, or you can come up with new words. It's up to you. And they're going to sort the CK words, if it's a CK lesson, into nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So they'll stick kick up in verb, truck will go to noun. This is a great opportunity to build some vocabulary awareness as well. So if 
they're not understanding what armored means, you can take some time to define it with them. But once they're all sorted into nouns, verbs, and adjectives, we're going to have them pick one of each and then build one sentence that uses all three words. In here, we'll also look at subject, predicate, and adverbial. So you know we're building sentences correctly, or as we call it with our students, the who are the what, did what, why, when, where, or how, as well as making sure they're applying that vocabulary knowledge correctly so that they can have proper uses of nouns, verbs, and adjectives. From vocabulary, we'll move into fluency, and there are so many skills that we can address here. For our youngest students, maybe it's just getting them comfortable and automatic with writing their different letters, or maybe at that point, it's getting the speed up a little bit if they're struggling with fluency as it relates to tapping out the sounds, identifying the letters, and putting it together for spelling. Maybe it's at the sentence level and getting them fluent with really being able to generate ideas and get them down effectively in a sentence. It could be any of those skills. Online, sometimes it'll be fluency as it relates to assistive technology and voice typing. So lots of things you can work on here, but with fluency, we're working to make sure that the processes are automatic and that students aren't spending a lot of time and effort getting letters or words or sentences out. The last area that we address is comprehension. So there are a bunch of different styles of writing that we will address with students. And this is where that comprehension piece comes in. They need to understand that if they're responding to a narrative prompt versus an opinion or an informative or persuasive, these are going to be structured differently. And it's important to know that both for reading and writing. So a narrative is always going to follow our story arc. We'll introduce characters in the setting, we'll lead up to the problem, the problem or the climax of the story will occur, it will transition to the solution, and then we'll end with a solution. In order to bridge the CK lesson into our writing, typically we will ask students to pick one of their spelling words or two of their spelling words and use it in the story. So maybe the word was brick and the setting is a brick house. Maybe the word was duck and a duck is the main character of the story. The second style of writing that we'll talk about is informative. And this is where students will have a topic, again, maybe it's ducks, and they have to inform the reader about that topic. We're giving information. So if their topic is duck, maybe they'll talk about how they can swim, they're a type of bird, and they quack. An opinion prompt or an opinion style of writing is going to pick a side in an argument. So would turtles make a good pet? Students will say yes or no, and then give three reasons why. So their reason should support their argument here. If you wanna pull in CK, again, you can swap turtles for chickens, for ducks, whatever CK word you wanna add there. You don't have to. Um, usually our opinion prompts, we don't hit on all four of these in every lesson, but I'm trying to use CK in each of them so you could see if that's what you wanted to work on with students, how you can apply it. For persuasive, we will talk with students about how they need to have an argument that they're making with three reasons why, and then understand the weakness of a counter argument. So let's say the prompt is convince your parents to get you a pet. They need to have their position, which is I should get a pet or we should get a pet and three reasons why. However, in a persuasive prompt, that's not enough because we know that the parents are then going to ask, Who's going to feed the pet? If it's a dog, who's going to walk the dog? Who's going to clean the litter box? If it's a cat, who's going to take care of it? Who's going to train it? So they have all of these questions and really those questions could be posed as reasons against getting a pet. So a student needs to understand, okay, what is my parent going to ask or what are they going to argue? What is the weakness of that argument and how can we argue back and have a stronger argument against it? So we'll show students how to formulate all of those different ideas and put it together in one paragraph. Now, if you're working with students and paragraphs, you wanna extend it to a passage, you can use the same processes. And instead of having three key details in one paragraph, you just expand it to make key detail one, your first body paragraph. Detail two is your second, and then detail three is your third. So definitely you're able to differentiate this and make it harder for students if you need to. 
Again, we're not doing all four of these prompts in every single lesson. Typically, we'll do narrative for a few weeks and then move into informative and then opinion and then persuasive. We'll also address summarizing with some of our students. So we can definitely go more in depth for all of these. If you would like that, definitely comment below and let us know. That way we can do another video and post specifically around the different styles of writing. But that is how we incorporate explicit writing instruction into every single one of our structured literacy lessons. If you wanna know more about structured literacy as a whole, so reading and writing, definitely jump into our free course, Seven Steps to Reading Intervention That Works. I'll link it below so that you can jump in there so that you can learn how we make our structured literacy lessons the most effective possible. So I'll link that below. And then if you like this video, definitely give it a like, leave us a comment and subscribe. We do put out new content every week. So we look forward to giving more content and let us know below in the comments, like I said before, what else you'd like to see. Have a great day and best of luck in your writing instruction.